Hi everybody, I'm Caroline Best of the Dow Horsemanship and we are going to be filming JJ's 30 day retraining here with me. And this is all about information. It should be at least for anyone that's getting to know a horse or a trainer that's getting to know a horse to train or retrain or even rehabilitate. So JJ is not new to me. I've had three or four lessons with him and I've already done an assessment with him. But I'm gonna go through that process with you so you get to know JJ too. And then watch our progress in the next 30 days of training. So basically, let's walk on out here and get JJ. JJ is a 13 year old. Uh, gray quarter horse, flea bitten now. He started his life out west as a ranch horse and then he became a lesson horse a few years ago. I'm not sure exactly how many. He became a lesson horse here in Florida and his owner was taking lessons on him and that's how he ended up with her. She's new to horses, an older rider always wanted a horse. She started out with a horse that wasn't very safe and ended up having some physical issues. But she didn't realize that until it was too late. Her confidence was broken with this horse. Um, and so she found JJ. And JJ is a sweetheart. Like I said, she took lessons on him and just an awesome, sweet, gentle, quiet horse, but JJ has a lot of triggers. He actually has a lot of issues. And he is your typical horse that people buy thinking he's perfect or bomb proof or safe, whatever. And he's not. So Myra has already had a few falls off of him because he has been triggered and gone from freezing and being dead quiet to exploding into a bucking rampage. Wow, so that's why he's here. All right, so if the camera wants to pan over there and look at pretty little JJ. So we're gonna get to look, observe JJ, see who he is. I'm going, since I already know him, I'm gonna start pushing some of his buttons Hi, buddy. So he's not really good at coming when you call yet. Myra is also a student of, of mine, not just with physical lessons here, but um, with the Mastery Membership Program. And so she's been working in the round pen with JJ on coming and joining up and feeling good about that. And obviously he's got some reservations. If I didn't ask him to come to me, I could go right up to him easily. I could still go right up to him easily and halter him, but that's not the way I work. And I don't think anyone should work that way. I think that we should all ask for join up. We should always ask our horse to join us, tells you where they are. And this is part of my assessment. This is part of my pre-flight. This is what tells me the, if the horse has hesitation to pressure, in this form of me asking. I'm not demanding, I'm not forcing, and I'm not making, am I? I'm just asking and then waiting to see. If he has this much stress and is this uncomfortable and hesitant with the ask, how do you think he's gonna be with pressure? And these quiet, bomb-proof horses respond to excessive force or pressure um, by shutting down and freezing. And that's what makes them appear to be quiet and calm. But they're really stoic, cold, checked out. A ticking time bomb. Most horses are like this. That's the key here. Most horses, horses are non-confrontational by nature. They're not aggre aggressive by nature. And they are followers by nature. In most horse personalities, we have dominant, passive, and submissive, just like the human, and most are passive and submissive by nature, most horses. And if they're pushed too hard, 
roughed up, manhandled, they just check out and go deep within. Whereas if you have, and this is just common sense too, if you have a more flighty or fight in a horse, what are, what are they going to do? Just like a person. They're either going to react by fleeing or fighting, rearing, running away from you. I'm just going to ask again with a little bit more pressure, with the clucking. And he held his breath and got really tight there. Now he's breathing heavy. Hi. So that was a little wake up to say, can you try and join me? So his work begins right now. He's more comfortable. I'm going to see if he can meet me halfway. So I'm going to be a little bit more demanding. And he's breathing heavy. Can you hear that, Sabrina? When he, whoo, yeah. So he's already hyperventilating. I'll take his mask off when I can get, get him. Come here, boo. I'm always going to give a horse a, a chance to get away. Always. I'm not here to threaten him and trap him. And that's just, yep. And there he goes. So he's breathing heavy. Did you guys hear that? So I could, I could have caught him easily. I did yesterday when he first arrived. Or he first arrived on Monday. Hi, buddy. But this is part of him relearning right now. To not be afraid of the ask or any additional pressure that accompanies that. So I'm going to keep pressure on him in the form of a cluck. Good boy. But this is not about pressure and release. This is about him becoming comfortable with pressure and experiencing it differently. That's the key here, the secret to rehabilitating horses, especially. And he needs to be rehabilitated. It's not just about retraining. He hasn't come here because he's learned the wrong things. He has, but it's much more complex than that. He's injured his owner several times now. So it's about rehabilitating him. I've got to get to the cause, and I already know what the cause is, but he needs a lot of time to release that and recover from it. And that's why he's here, to get started. Good boy. Thank you. So if I'm going to cluck like that, that is my way of adding more pressure in the least threatening way, meaning I don't want to add pressure, constant pressure by running him, you know, chasing him with a rope or a whip or a lasso or anything. It's not about that kind of pressure. This is not about pressure and release. This is about him becoming more comfortable with pressure and me getting him to a point where he can become responsive and not react to it. And responsive means the horse will use their left brain. They'll start thinking. And that is when the horse starts to tell you that they're able to self-regulate, regulate their emotions, their nervous system. Because when a horse goes into self-preservation mode, whether it's freeze mode, fight or flight, they are in their sympathetic nervous system, their self-preservation nervous system, the opposite of a thinking, calm, relaxed horse. And so regulating is when he will become a what? Thinking, calm and relaxed horse, a trusting horse. And so this is part of the process and where I begin. There's the lick and chew I was waiting for. Good, I just want him to relax a little bit. Yeah, bub, I'm gonna spray you down again. I know the flies are bad. He'll have a, access to the stall soon enough. Hey, boo. Oh, I know. So I'm not here to trick him or throw this rope over because I already know he has issues with that. Um, I'm just gonna take the fly mask off now. Good boy. And then I'll put the halter on. He can leave. I'm not here to quickly get it on or trap him. He's gonna show up however he needs to show up and we'll deal with that because it's all information. Hey, handsome. What a lovely horse. Lovely horse. All right, boo. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good boy. You are a good boy. So JJ has, um, he has some pretty severe issues with his pole area, his ears and his, his face. Um, he doesn't right now but he's comfortable. When he's not comfortable, you guys will see that. 
He uh, is a pullback. He wants to rear. Um, he's tight and tense. He can't supple. He can't give. Um, he's just real defensive and really worried. All right, buddy. So let's get you in and fly spray you. He doesn't like stalls. Hmm, I wonder why. He was a lesson horse. He loves a run in. So I'm here. Sabrina, you come on through, love. I'm here to get him used to the stall. So what'll happen is while he's here, he'll have this small pasture and he'll have access to these stalls like run-ins. I might even lock them back here where he can come and go and then eventually can find him in one of these stalls. But I won't do that until he trusts me more and I can get him self-regulating. Because horses learn learned helplessness. I could lock him in that stall and close it all up and he'll just learn to submit. He'll become oppressed, suppressed. You're not teaching him anything. He's not being involved, educated, learning. He's just learning to cope. And his coping mechanism is to shut down. You're gonna get fed your lunch, come on. So we're gonna come in with Sobroso, who might act like a turd. I'm gonna get in between, come here. You're fine, Sobroso. Come on over here, Jay. Good, because Sobroso is very <laughs> territorial. We're just passing through, Bubba. Come on, sweetie. So JJ is pretty relaxed so far. A little ouchy. He just has his feet trimmed on Monday. <laughs> it's Brosso in the ears. Grumpy old man. All right, so um, this looks like, oh, I've never heard of this fly spray that your mama got you, JJ. It's not a holistic one. I, well, good, if you guys become boo-boos, that'd be awesome. I um, only use one type of fly spray. La la, piranha, has citronella. I know some people say it causes cancer, yada, yada, yada. Um, I've been using it forever on all my horses forever. And the citronella is an oil and it is amazing because it sticks to them so they can get sweaty and it's, you can spray it on when they're wet. So I don't know how well this is gonna work. He had it applied this morning. Um, smells kind of like, what is that, ultra something shield? Good boys, but not so bad with fly spray. Hi, babe. Your lip isn't bad. A little bit of tension, but not bad, buddy. Yeah. I don't know how um, dry my round pen is. We had a tropical storm come through yesterday. That's why we have limbs everywhere and everything is so wet. You look really tired. And you spent the day and the night in the run-in up there in the field. Yeah. What oh, a sweet boy. So sweet, huh, guys? You wouldn't think he'd have issues. Yeah, but everything's hunky-dory right now. That's pretty nice, Jay. I'm pretty impressed. Let's see if you can bend. Yeah, we were working on this. Your mom's been working on this at home since you last bucked her off about a month ago. So the faster, not fast, but the better, faster he does with all my on the ground assessments, like suppling, which ain't so great right now, better he does, the uh, more I will be convinced that it, I might be able to get on. But he also has to pick me up. So he's gonna learn all the exercises for me to trust him and for him to trust me. So I'm just asking for him to lightly give to the left, just light, look at my fingers. And the fact that a horse can't supple side to side is a very strong sign of a lack of trust. Now I've seen horses rubbernecked into submission, forced to give. Um, JJ has not, and as a reigning horse, that really surprises me. But um, 
he just really, this, is, this isn't bad. The first time I asked him to do this a couple months ago, we spent a long time going around in circles. And he was really defensive, really tight. I just asked for a little bit. I want him to follow a light contact and to give and trust. But see, the minute I start asking for this type of flexion or suppling, everything starts to change on him. So he gets a little more worried. He's really tight. Look at the eye, a little more apprehensive. So this is so key, you guys. This is all about trust. I'm not making it. I'm just at offering a little bit of contact and holding. Offering it and holding, meaning he can't snatch away from me. He tried two months ago. And then if he gets stuck there, I'll just ask for a little bit more. I'll cluck, add a little bit more pressure. I'm not going to pull. I'm not going to make it happen. It's not what I'm trying to teach here. I want him to think, and I want him to learn how to participate. I don't want him to learn helplessness. I don't want him to go on autopilot, meaning when he learns a certain routine or technique, he does it, but he's not there, because this is how his owner gets bucked off. This is like the number one problem for most horses. May you always be one with your horse. And before I leave, make every moment with your horse enjoyable, purposeful, and teachable. Seriously, teachable, even if you have to just reinforce something. But make it enjoyable. Even when it's not enjoyable for him, you've got to make sure it ends in a good place consistently. Look at how tight you are. You don't even like that. We're going to get, he might be sore, you guys. But we're just going to get all that checked out tomorrow. Okay? All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.